Good morning. Have your breakfast? Yes. We take food every time, every day, but we give little importance to the process of swallowing. But if complexities happen, it can happen in specific individuals and that will lead to significant issues in that individual and there are dedicated fields of speech and language pathology and swallowing rehabilitation. So the area of swallowing or dysphagia is getting high momentum and so many advances or recent advances are happening daily basis in the area of swallowing, swallowing disorders. So to know the uh, functional aspects or investigations in uh, dysphagia, we have to know, you, you have to be thorough with the physiology of swallowing. So today we can start with physiology of swallowing. I go through the mechanism, the different phases or stages of swallowing the muscles involved in swallowing and after that I will go to the functional uh, aspects or investigations in the field of swallowing. Okay, so today's class is on physiology of swallowing or deglutition. Physiology of swallowing. Though we swallow uh, without our uh, concentration or uh, awareness actually this is a very complex uh, mechanism involving so many structures it can involve the hard palate it involves the soft palate involve the muscles of tongue then the muscles of mandible it can involve the nasopharynx then the uh, pharyngeal isthmus then uh, Hyoid bone, the thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, uh, epiglottis, the larynx and also the pharynx and also the esophagus. So all these structures, uh, the muscles, the muscles of oral cavity, the muscles of jaw muscles, muscles of mandible, muscles of larynx, muscles of pharynx and muscles of esophagus are involved in soloing. A process which starts from uh, oral cavity up to the stomach and also there is protection of this uh, respiration or the larynx. So actually we can divide this uh, whole process into a process or phase of propulsion of food and also a phase of protection of airway. Propulsion and protection. Okay. So Actually there are three phases, one is an oral phase, another one is a pharyngeal phase and the third is an esophageal phase. So oral, pharyngeal, and esophageal. Each of these stages are important. And there are muscles and also the nerves involved in each of them. And a coordinated action of all the three will only lead to a proper swallowing mechanism. So let us see one by one. The first is an oral phase. So the food enters into the mouth. It uh, get break down, mixes with saliva and then it is ready to go into the pharyngeal phase. So this is a voluntary phase and the duration can be 1 to 2 seconds but it can vary considerably depending upon the consistency of food. Okay, So the oral phase again divided into 1A and 1B. So in 1A the food um, get, getting prepared for swallowing. So that is a preparatory phase. Preparatory phase and 1B is the oral uh, oral phase proper or the propulsive phase. Or oral phase proper. Okay. So in the oral phase or in the uh, preparatory phase, Mainly the muscles of jaw, we have to open and close the mouth, so muscles of jaw and also the muscles intrinsic as well as extrinsic muscles of tongue are um, 
acting on that. So let us see what are the muscles involved in the preparatory phase. May the main muscles of the jaw are they are the elevators, depressors, uh, acting on protrusion, retraction and side to side movement. What are the primary muscles of mastication? There are four in number. Primary muscles of mastication are uh, they are the medial pterygoid. This is the inner surface or the internal surface or the medial surface. So medial pterygoid mandible uh, is the internal or the medial surface and this is the external or the lateral surface. So the primary muscles of mastication are four in number. One is medial pterygoid, then this is lateral pterygoid, then uh, temporalis, this is also temporalis and masseter. Okay, so these are the uh, primary muscles of mastication. These are the inner surface. This is which one is this? Mylohyoid muscle. It is not. They are acting along with the uh, oral cavity, and uh, yeah. So uh, temporalis, lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid, and masseter are the primary muscles of mastication. And the elevators of the jaw are again temporalis, uh, medial pterygoid and the masseter. And the depressors are mainly digastric and lateral pterygoid. And jaw protrudus like this. Protrusion is by the medial and lateral pterygoid, digastric and masseter. And uh, the, the, especially the superficial fibers of masseter. And retraction again the deeper fibers of masseter along with the uh, temporalis. Okay, so masseter, superficial fibers come help in protrusion and the deeper fibers of masseter help in retraction. And again the side to side movement is by the lateral pterygoid. So these are the muscles of uh, jaw which help in uh, swallowing. So elevators, depressors, protrusion, retraction and side to side movement. You have to remember this picture and this was asked in this year's uh, OSCE, DNB OSCE. Okay, this year's DNB OSCE, this was given and uh, you are asked, candidates are asked to write the or the name the muscles. Okay, so this was the picture. Every, any, anything in anatomy can be asked like this but this year it was asked. So, uh, these are the muscles of the jaw which help it. Uh, swallowing. And now what are the muscles of tongue? There are intrinsic muscles and also extrinsic muscles. Four intrinsic muscles and four extrinsic muscles. These intrinsic muscles have no attachment to the bone. Their, or, their origin and insertion are into the fibers of the tongue. And uh, actually they change the shape of the tongue. Flattening, curving like that. And these extrinsic muscles actually change the position of the tongue in relation to the oral cavity. So, uh, intrinsic mainly there are longitudinal muscles, transverse muscles and vertical muscles. They change the shape of the tongue in relation to the bolus. And these two muscles are actually intrinsic as well as extrinsic group are actually dependent. Uh, for example, when you flatten the tongue, Actually, it is protruded, elongated in order to pull the uh, push the bolus uh, backwards. So these two muscles act, the uh, they dependent to each other. Okay. So uh, along with this, the muscles of the cheek, like buccinator, and also the lip muscles are also work together. Preparatory phase starts when the food enters into the mouth. So. There is closure of the uh, uh, lips and also uh, the muscles of tongue, jaw as well as the lips and the uh, buc uh, buccal mucosa uh, start acting together. If there is uh, fluid, there is no need of chewing and if there is uh, solid food, 
the chewing is also started grinding motion started and the food is getting uh, mixed with the saliva with the salivary amylase and it become a single bolus and then the single bolus is held in close contact with the between the tongue and the heart palate okay the food bolus is held in close contact with the tongue and the heart palate and this uh, tongue you know this tongue is become grooved the central part of the tongue central part of the tongue is grooved and the food is kept there and it is in close contact with the hard palate and the lateral edges the food here there is a food and the hard palate so the lateral edges of the tongue are also coming in close contact with the hard palate okay so the lateral edges are in close contact and the central part of the tongue get grooved and the food as a bolus is kept between this tongue and the hard palate one thing also happens that is the um, root of tongue that is the posterior one third of tongue comes and attaches comes in close contact with the soft palate okay this is what happens in the uh, preparatory phase okay so then this oropharyngeal isthmus is closed it is closed uh, until the food is ready to propulsion into the pharynx so whenever the food enters the preparatory phase of the oral phase preparatory stage of the oral phase starts so that the lips we can't swallow with our mouth open see you can't swallow so the first uh, whenever the food enters the lips are closed and we start chewing or if the fluid it is there is no need of chewing and then the tongue muscles uh, becomes a tongue uh, takes a characteristic shape that is the central part becomes a groove and the lateral edges comes in close contact or seal with the hard palate and the food is kept between the tongue and the hard palate in the front part and the uh, base of tongue or the um, posterior part comes and get a seal with the soft palate so it takes around 1 to 2 seconds Depen and yeah, that too varies according to the consistency of food so that is the first phase after the food bolus is formed and held between the tongue and the hard palate a wave of contraction start from the tip of tongue and it goes posteriorly from the tip of tongue it goes posteriorly and a wave of contraction start from the tip of tongue and it goes posteriorly and it also pushes the bolus posteriorly okay so what will happen a wave of contraction start from the tip of tongue and it exerts pressure over the bolus of food if it is a large bolus the pressure exerted will be more and the pressure exerted for a smaller bolus is less okay so that the bolus goes posterior a wave of contraction start from the tip of tongue and it exerts the tongue muscles will exert uh, pressure over the uh, bolus of food so that it will go posteriorly and uh, at the end of this propulsive phase so after the preparatory phase the bolus is formed and then a wave of contraction start from the tip of tongue and it goes posteriorly and this tongue muscles will exert pressure over this bolus so that again it will go posteriorly and at the end of this propulsive phase that is at the beginning of the pharyngeal phase what happens because it is exerting so much pressure the bolus is exerting so much pressure over the palate the palatoglossal muscle okay this palatoglossal muscle will relax so that this soft palate is pushed postro superiorly the palatoglossal arch is uh, um, uh, relaxed and it is pushed postro superiorly 
so that there is an oro this uh, nasopharyngeal isthmus is closed and the nasal respiration is stopped for a phase okay and along with that this tongue muscles what will the tongue muscles do so the root of or the posterior one third of tongue will go andro inferior it will go in an andro inferior direction so that what will happen this bolus is pushed into the oropharynx okay so at the propulsive phase the wave of contraction start from the tip of tongue and the tongue muscles will exert pressure over the bolus and this bolus will go posteriorly it will press on the palatoglossal arch so that the soft palate uh, fibers will, uh, will go posterior superiorly and also the base of tongue muscles will go andro inferiorly so that this bolus is pushed into the oropharynx so the uh, muscle uh, the strength or the uh, tongue exerts strength over the bolus if it is a large bolus more strength is exerted so that it goes very fast into the uh, forcefully it goes into the oropharynx for a very small bolus that much of uh, force is not exerted so the total oral phase takes around 1 second and this uh, duration is not depend upon the age of the patient okay next is the pharyngeal phase. So when the foot bolus reaches the palatoglossal arch, then the pharyngeal stage begins. So this pharyngeal stage is the uh, irreversible stage in the process of swallowing. Once started, it cannot be reversed. So when the foot reaches this palatoglossal arch, certain trigger points are stimulated and the sensory fibers, afferent sensory fibers will go in through the 9, 10 and 11, it's the cranial now, 9, 10 and 11, 9, 10 and 11 uh, cranial now and reaches the uh, tractus uh, solitaris, that's the nucleus of tractus solitaris in the uh, brain stem and efferent fibers are uh, transmitted to these um, muscles. So let us see what are the muscles involved in pharyngeal stage. Basically there is elevation of the pharynx and larynx. There is closure of the nasopharyngeal inlet and also closure of the glottis. That is needed for, to prevent aspiration. Otherwise what will happen when the, uh, this pharynx and larynx, they are actually uh, common. So when it is not closed, this will go into the larynx and get aspirated and if the nasopharyngeal isthmus is not closed again it will go into the nasopharynx so there will be nasal regurgitation of food so it has to be prevented isn't it so the first step happening is the closure of the larynx along with the nasopharyngeal isthmus is closed and there is elevation of the pharynx and larynx that is to widen the pharynx like a snake when capturing a prey its pharynx is widened. The similar thing happens in man, um, human beings also. And along with this, the foot has to be propulsed into the esophagus. So, from the uh, point of contact with the palatoglossal arch up to the entry into the esophagus. Beyond the upper esophageal sphincter is the pharyngeal stage. And that takes less than one second in normal uh, human being. So, what are the muscles involved? At the level of soft palate, here, this soft palate has to be closed. So, the tensor velia palatini and uh, tenses the soft palate and the levator velia palatini uh, elevate so that this soft palate is going postero superiorly. Uh, actually, I, I think I told it along with the uh, propulsive phase. Actually, it is uh, propulsive phase is up to elevation of soft palate. Elevation of the soft palate and closure of the nasopharyngeal isthmus is happening in the pharyngeal stage. So, tensor valley palatine tenses the soft palate, levator uh, elevated along with the palatopharyngeus. That is the horizontal part of palatopharyngeus is called the passavance ridge so that it is also closed. So that there is complete closure of the um, nasopharyngeal isthmus. So, there is... Um, uh, up in here for a very minimal period. Okay, that is along with the starting of the pharyngeal phase, there is uh, absence of contracture or the 
diaphragm at the contracture is stopped. Diaphragm is not contracting, so that there is a very um, fragmentary apnea happens. So the swallowing and uh, uh, respiration will not happen simultaneously. At this stage, the uh, respiration is stopped in order to protect the airway. So that the soft palate, that is the tensor villi palate, elevator and palatopharynges are acting there. And at the hyoid bone, what happens? There is elevation of the uh, hyoid bone and also depression of the hyoid bone. So elevation of hyoid bone is to elevate the pharynx and also the larynx. So elevators are digastric muscles supplied by both uh, mandibular as well as seventh on, because digastric has two um, parts. Then stylohyoid supplied by seven and geniohyoid and mylohyoid supplied by 12. Okay. So digastric, stylohyoid, geniohyoid and mylohyoid are elevators of the hyoid bone. Omohyoid, sternohyoid and sternothyroid and thyrohyoid are the depressors, depressors of the uh, hyoid bone. Omohyoid, sternohyoid and sternothyroid supplied by ansa's cervicalis and thyrohyoid supplied by 12th now. Okay. So elevators and depressors. Along with that, there is a uh, uh, expanding and elevating the pharynx and larynx, they are the pharynges, stylopharynges, palatopharynges and salpingopharynges. And at the glottic level, actually the video fluoroscopic report, uh, uh, reports are giving us as the first step is closure of vocal cord and also closure of the glottis. The closure of the uh, vocal cord of the larynx happen from a below upward direction. The first vocal cords are closed by the action of lateral cricoaretinoid and uh, the oblique and transverse cricoaretinoid will come and approximate the false cord aryglotic and oblique arytenoid will again it will uh, medially rotate and it will close the uh, epiglottis also okay and actually the epiglottis first the epiglottis uh, it become the vertical uh, epiglottis become horizontally oriented and the first phase it is horizontally oriented and after that the upper part of the epiglottis will drop downwards okay it is happening like that first it is horizontal then the upper third drops down so that a complete closure will happen and uh, uh, pharyngeal constrictors are there above downwards so that the upper esophageal sphincter is opened and the food will go in a um, peristaltic fashion by the action of the superior, middle and the inferior constrictors of the pharynx. So these are the muscles acting on the pharyngeal stage. Uh, in the initial part, there is closure of the nasopharyngeal isthmus. Then there is closure of the larynx that is from below upward first adduction of the vocal cord then adduction of the um, glottis then there is approximation of arytenoid then this epiglottis comes and approximate with the arytenoids okay so that and there is also uh, nasopharyngeal isthmus closure and then this uh, after that, there is elevation of the pharyngeal and uh, laryngeal complex. Uh, there is propulsion of the foot bolus. Okay, this foot bolus is propelled into the esophagus. Here there is an upper esophageal sphincter. So the upper esophageal sphincter relaxes and this foot bolus is uh, propelled into the uh, esophagus by the Peristaltic wave like contraction of the uh, superior, middle and inferior constrictors from a top to bottom. That is in a uh, cranial to caudal direction. Okay. So, once it has passed, what will happen? This tongue will get elevated and here it makes a seal. The tongue makes a seal here. Okay. So that the food will not go. That is what uh, I already told you. It is an irreversible process. This cannot go back. Uh, so, there is contraction of the nasopharyngeal isthmus, glottic closure, elevation of the elevation of the pharynx and larynx. 
so that there is widening of the pharyngeal uh, inlet and by the along with them there is contraction of the um, pharyngeal constrictors so that this food bolus is gone into the uh, esophagus okay it is gone into the esophagus and after that what will happen this upper esophageal sphincter will close this upper esophageal sphincter will close once the uh, food bolus has gone beyond or gone into the esophagus so at that stage ends the pharyngeal phase so pharyngeal phase starts when the food bolus has reached the palatoglossal arch or the palatoglossus muscle and it is finished once it has gone into the esophagus and closure of the upper esophageal sphincter occurs so normally this takes less than uh, 1 seconds and after this happened what the food bolus is not going directly actually by the video fluoroscopic uh, pictures we know that the solid food will go directly into the uh, esophagus and the fluid will go to the hypopharynx and it will pass through the piliform sinus on both sides into the esophagus okay so there are two channels one it can go directly and in uh, also it will go laterally through the uh, hypopharynx that is the piriform sinus into the esophagus usually the more solid the food it will go directly and the less solid and the fluids will go laterally through the piriform sinus into the um, esophagus okay so after that this uh, there is depression of the hyoid bone there is depression of the pharynx and larynx and uh, water food is left there it will get sucked sucked into the uh, esophagus by the hypopharyngeal suction pump so the key elements working here are one is trunk tongue driving force one is a tongue driving force hypopharyngeal suction pump and the third element happening here is a esophageal peristalsis because of these three tongue driving force hypopharyngeal suction pump effect and also by the peristal esophageal peristalsis this pharyngeal phase is completed and the food now the food is in the esophagus once the food bolus has gone into the esophagus and the upper esophageal sphincter is closed the esophageal phase starts it is around 8 to 12 seconds pharyngeal stage is less than 1 second and like the pharyngeal stage the esophageal stage is also involuntary and there is primary peristaltic wave that is a positive pressure wave of around 50 millimeters of mercury so the wave pattern is actually there is a negative negative wave because at the pharyngeal phase there is elevation of the pharynx and larynx and this esophagus cervical esophagus is pulled anteriorly so there is a negative negative uh, wave is there after that there is an abrupt positive wave at the start of esophageal uh, stage and then there is minimal increase in the positive pressure and later at the last there is an abrupt positive peak followed by a negative peak this happens in the primary peristalsis and this is peristaltic stripping peristaltic stripping wave okay peristaltic stripping wave and secondary peristaltic wave can happen that is due to local uh, the secondary wave of peristaltic waves are produced locally because of distension of the esophageal segment and these tertiary peristaltic waves are actually irregular non propulsive waves uh, involving long segments and that happens usually in uh, highly anxious patients okay so primary peristaltic wave is the, actually the one which propels the food downwards and when it has gone through the lower esophageal sphincter lower esophageal sphincter you have to know about this lower esophageal sphincter it was already described along with anatomy of esophagus please see that the link is given in the description box so once it has gone through the uh, lower esophageal sphincter into the stomach this esophageal uh, phase comes to an end
So regarding neural control of soloing, a vast array of evidence is given in text including Scott Brown textbook of uh, autolaryngology. Uh, it's very difficult to understand actually because the studies are going on and uh, the exact uh, mechanism is not known. I have tried my best to uh, simplify it like this. Those who want to know more can read based on this. So actually this neural control is from uh, different areas of central nervous system and the motor neurons from brainstem up to the cerebral cortex. And a coordinated activity of all the centers is very much essential for a normal solo. So um, basically it's a sensory feedback uh, mechanism and in the cerebral cortex is usually bilateral uh, representation is going but some studies uh, tell us the dominant hemisphere is controlling. But in the cerebral cortex there is a prefrontal, frontal and parietal lobe are mainly involved and it is mainly of the voluntary control. So in the soloing we already discussed that the oral phase is under voluntary control and that too can be under reflex action also resulted by the stimulation of certain um, mucous membrane of the oral mucosa. And uh, there is a reflex control, mainly the uh, pharyngeal phase and the esophageal phase is under reflex uh, control and that is at the brainstem level. And this uh, swallowing center and respiratory center are very much uh, interrelated. Okay. And uh, uh, the, at the end orbital level, the feedback control is at the medulla. So the solo center is mainly the nucleus of tractus auditorius. And there, from there to motor neurons of nucleus ambiguous by 9 and 10. There is also trigeminal nucleus, facial nucleus. And hypoglossal nucleus is also involved and it is controlling the pharyngoesophageal musculature which was already discussed, isn't it? So, uh, and there is an, I already told you, there is an interconnection between the respiratory center and the soloing center. That is why there is a swallow apnea. At the time of soloing, especially the pharyngeal phase starts only after uh, the cessation of respiration. Because the uh, vocal cord and the glottic adduction of the glottis happens, then epiglottis comes and protect the uh, larynx, then only the pharyngeal phase starts. So there is a soloing apnea is also happening. That is because of this interconnection between this respiratory center and the solo center. So in a nutshell, this is the neural control. And also most of soloing occurs at the expiratory phase of respiration. That is again a protective mechanism. Another term uh, is CPG, that is a central pattern generator, central pattern generator, that is uh, the correct sequencing of soloing in normal individual is controlled by this central pattern generator, that is actually a group of neurons which help to coordinate the activities of this soloing and the CPG action uh, is controlled by a pacemaker type activity of a group of neurons. So uh, this is the basics or the simplest uh, form of neural control of uh, soloing. Those who wanted uh, explanation or elaboration can further read on this. There are so many articles, so many evidence on neural control of soloing because all these are needed when we treat dysphagia in different different case scenarios.